All right. Ever find yourself clinging to old habits or ways of thinking that no longer serve you? Well, you're not alone. Our next keynote dives deep into can letting go of past conditioning empower leadership in a disruptive age? It's about shedding those outdated beliefs and embracing change, not just to survive, but to thrive in an era of disruption. And who better to guide us through this transformative journey than our keynote speaker and gold sponsor, Sean Shukarami, the founder and CEO of Opelio. Get ready as Sean shares his insights and strategies for breaking free from the past to lead with empowerment and vision. Let's welcome him to the stage. Thank you. My name is Sean Shakarami. It really is my pleasure. I'm so grateful to be here in front of you. The first thing I'd like to ask is if we could stand up and shake it out a little bit, please, everyone, shake up, shake it out. I get it. It's early. A lot of us traveled. I'm jet lagged. You're jet lagged. So I'm just a small business owner. I'm humbled. I looked over the sheets. You are all incredibly accomplished people. Many of you in this room may take nothing away from my, from my talk other than equipping you with tools to help other people. So please keep that in mind. If this isn't for you, that's okay. There's someone in your life that this is for. The reason I asked everyone to stand up is because the first thing to start new habits and to break old habits is to do something different. How often do we get stuck inside of our technology? In fact, I'm a hypocrite because throughout today and the next day, you're going to see me on my phone. I get it. Business is important. In some ways, business takes priority over what we're all here to accomplish. But for the next 15, 20 minutes, I would ask for your undivided attention. And I do promise that at the end of this session, there will be a time to pull out our technology. All right? It's a great tool. I don't want to shy away from that. Now, not only am I so grateful to be here just because of how humbled I am by all of your accomplishments, I'm grateful to be here because, truthfully, I shouldn't be here. About ten and a half years ago, I had landed my dream job. I'm not sure if anyone's seen the movie. I think it's called American Psycho. Uh, but I was an investment banker. I didn't even know what investment banking was until my freshman year of college. I got on campus at TCU, and I was not quite a 4.0 student, but I was always a high achiever. Maybe that resonates with some people in this room. Now, the way the system works is it is built to guide the top talent to certain industries. TCU was a non-target school for investment banking at that time, and I was part of their business honors program, and I had nearly perfect grades in finance and accounting, and so the natural course was to tell me, hey, this is how you get to Wall Street. Now, I'm a Texas boy, born and raised in Fort Worth, Texas, going to downtown Manhattan for two, three years as investment banking analyst. That was a little above even my pay grade, but I did land a job and found an investment banking job in Dallas. When I started, I was thrilled. About three months into it, I was starting to understand maybe living someone else's dream isn't actually as fulfilling as I thought it would be. But I grinded it out. I was working easily 90 to 100, 110 hours a week. And one of my best childhood friends growing up was getting married. I was a, uh, a groomsman in his wedding coming up. It was on a Saturday. In investment banking, you don't get Saturdays off. Uh, I am a man of faith, but at that time I wasn't practicing my faith. But I did tell them I went to church 
because that was about the only time that you could get off with Sunday morning in order to go to church. And I used that time to sleep in. So I remember waking up. It was late September. It was a Saturday morning. I was coming off three all-nighters in a row, and I had just gotten this really awesome, fabulous machine. Maybe you've heard of espresso. Maybe we have some Starbucks fans. I had one of those, you know, $1,000 espresso makers. Uh, Looking back on it, espresso was my drug. And I, kid you not, lined up six shots of espresso to wake up every morning. And I lined up my six shots of espresso, took them, hopped in the car, and went off to where I thought I was going to my best friend's wedding. I was in the right-hand lane going down Northwest Highway, and I took a normal exit, and I lost control of my vehicle. I remember being suspended midair, flipping over the median wall, and rolling down a grassy knoll. Now, what is it about Dallas and grassy knolls? One of the most vivid memories is being upside down as my, my car was propelled into the air, And my life did flash before my eyes, kind of like those cartoons. And all I could think was, this is what I'm going to be remembered for. I remember letting go of the vice grip I had on the steering wheel and preparing for imminent death. My car made impact and rolled down the hill, and it stopped on its side with the driver door crushed against the ground. My mom always wanted me to be a doctor, and I couldn't because I would faint at the sight of blood, and I remember being scared to look down at my body. But I mustered up the courage. I looked down. Not a scratch on me. I climbed out of my sunroof. Thank God I had a sunroof. And I waited on the side of the highway for paramedics and ambulance and firefighters and my, my cell phone had been ejected out of the car, and uh, thankfully a good Samaritan stopped, and I was able uh, to get medical help, at which I denied. And being the strong fighter that I am, I still made it to my friend's wedding that day. Except I don't remember an important part of the story. I wasn't in the right-hand lane. I was in the far left lane. I wasn't going the speed limit. I truly believed I was. They believed, based on my tire marks, that I was going about 120 miles per hour. I had fallen asleep behind the wheel of my car. I was going in and out of consciousness, and what I thought was the right-hand lane going 60 miles an hour I cut across four lanes of traffic to make an exit, to make it to the wedding, lost control of my vehicle, and flipped it over the wall. There's two very important lessons here. One is seeing is not always the truth. I believed I was in the right-hand lane. I believed I was going the speed limit. That was not the objective reality of the situation. The fact that I stand here is a miracle. There's a lot more to my story. Ten, over 10 years have transpired since that moment. But over those 10 years, I truly believe that I was spared for a reason. And that reason was to figure out what in the hell is my reason. And over those 10 years, I've learned that empowering others and helping others rise above their trauma is where I get my greatest satisfaction out of my life. You see, when we're shedding past beliefs, many of these beliefs we didn't even voluntarily choose. The reason I was so driven in school, although It is a respectful ideal to be good in school was not my belief. 
It was a belief that was passed on from my parents. Now, I'm still responsible for that belief, and I still believe in that belief to try hard and do good in school. But when we err on the sides of radicalism, radical results are not always what we want. Sometimes we do want radical transformation. But when we believe in such things to a degree of which it overshadows our core values, it can become a limiting belief, even good beliefs. The trauma that forms our beliefs often happens at very young ages. And unfortunately, because these things happen at very young ages, they get stored in the amygdala. I bet many of you already know what that means. But for those who might not, the amygdala is basically the small lizard part of the brain that governs some of our most hated types of emotions. So when trauma happens at a young age and it gets stored in the amygdala, we may not actually remember the trauma itself. But we feel it. We feel it in the forms of what we call anxiety, depression, hopelessness, feelings of overwhelm, stress that you cannot control. Many of us in today's society find ourselves in a constant state of fight or flight. Our parasympathetic nervous system is constantly shooting cortisol down our veins. I believe it's one of the reasons that we have such an obesity epidemic. I believe it's one of the reasons that we have a suicide epidemic. I believe it's a reason behind the social media addiction in teenagers, the comparison, the overwhelm, the depression, the hopelessness. It goes on and on and on. And the cure is actually very simple. The cure is stillness. I'm a man of faith. One of my favorite Bible, Bible verses is be still and know that He is God. When you look at that verse and you look at the different translations, be still translates to stop striving. When we think about that in context of who we are and what we do on a day in and day out basis, many of us strive. I strive. I'm a small business owner, acquiring new customers, making deals happen. It's what keeps food on my family's table, it's exciting stressful, I wouldn't trade it for the world. But that constant striving is killing us. It's killing us. So I set out to share my findings. And I wrote a book. It's called Resonate. Resonate Principles of Peak Performance. Tells more of my story, but the reason I bring it up is because I laid out principles. As a CPA, one of the beautiful things about accounting that a lot of people don't understand is that it's not black and white. In fact, go talk to a doctor. They're going to tell you the practice of medicine is not black and white. Nothing in life is pure black and white. It's all different shades of gray. It's judgment calls, and we create boundaries or principles. And so I created a book of principles that I learned that help people figure out 
what it truly is stored in their amygdala, stored in the back of their mind, the trauma that's holding them back from helping and empowering others. It's an acronym. So to resonate, the beautiful thing about resonance, if you're a music lover like I am, is you cannot resonate alone. You cannot do business alone. You can't succeed alone. You can't fail alone either, just by the way. It takes a community. To resonate basically means to carry significance with. The R is for rhythm. There's an energy. There's a current. There's vibrations and frequencies. There's a rhythm to each day, to each moment, to each season. If we can find ways to develop practices within a principle of rhythm, by rather than fighting the rhythm, but being comfortable within it, you're that much closer. How many of us have ever had the experience where we have a boss that says, I need that by tomorrow, and you know that you can get it done by tomorrow, but you're going to be sacrificing putting your daughter to bed that night? I know I've been there. That's not acting within the rhythm. That's fighting the rhythm. The E is emotional intelligence. I remember when I was a young child, they asked me what I wanted to be, and I said I wanted to be President of the United States. Great. Yeah. <laughs> And as I got older, I found out what I was really asking for and, and, and uh, decided against that dream. <laughs> but I bring that up because many of us do want good things in our life. Promotions, elevation, whatever, you, whatever position you're seeking. The number one skill to get where you're going is emotional intelligence. As a small business owner, I provide advisory services for clients at investment banks, for fairly large companies and organizations in the healthcare industry, which is where I have my financial background. And every CFO, CEO I meet with, they don't understand nor care about the spreadsheets. As great as they might look, what they care about is the emotional intelligence of the counterparty and the other relationships that they have around them. The S is sequencing. So the emotional appeal, now the logical appeal. Things happen in sequential, logical order. I've worked with a number of young, ambitious individuals wanting to start up their own companies, wanting to become entrepreneurs or may have already made that jump. And I made the same mistake myself. You cannot skip steps. It is very rare to skip steps and be successful. It can happen. I'll give you uh, an example. LeBron James has so much generational skill and talent, he was able to skip college and be successful in the NBA. I'm not LeBron James. I don't think anyone as skilled as you are are LeBron James either. Even Michael Jordan went to college and played college ball. What I mean by skipping steps It can be simple. You wake up. My routine is I study my Bible. I have my prayer time. I do my meditations and I work out and then I have a protein shake. I skip any one of those things and my entire day can become derailed. Now, I'm not telling you to be OCD, but I think you get the point. O is for order. 
There is a hierarchy. There are institutions that should be respected. There are also hierarchies that should be taken down. However, before we take steps to take down a hierarchy, you should ask yourself, is it my place? Is it my calling? Is it my anointing to take this hierarchy down? Or would it be better serving, more helpful to me and for everyone around me if I just found a new hierarchy? My last corporate job did not treat me well. There is a part of me that wanted to tear down the hierarchy. I decided to create my own. In is nature. Spend 20, 30 minutes outside every day. It's that simple. And understand that everyone has their own nature. Appeal to it. Get in tune with it. Live in community. A is your attitude. Bring a game-changing attitude every single day. And all these sound easy. They're simple. One of my favorite mentors always told me, Sean, keep everything simple. But always remember, there's a big gap between simple and easy. So we have to train every day. I don't know what that process looks like for you. That's why it's a principle. That's the beautiful thing. You apply it to your life where it fits in. I can tell you what it looks like for me. What it looks like for me is waking up at 5 a.m. Going in... On my couch, in my PJs, where I'm comfortable, and meditating in all the wrong positions that they tell you are the right positions to meditate. Maybe one day I'll I'll perfect the lotus position. Maybe not. It's okay if it looks different. In fact, it's good if it looks different. Because that is the secret. There is no right way. Your power is in figuring out your way. And you train. If you can't guess already, that's the T. Train it. And I promise if you put all these principles in action, it will culminate. Small, consistent habits every day will culminate into the E, a life of excellence. Excellence does not mean success. Excellence is not a reflection of your bank account. Living excellently is doing your best and letting go of everything else outside of your control. Now, you say, okay, that's great. That helps me a lot. How do I empower others? That's the other secret. By letting your light shine You are giving others permission to do the same with their life. They say for the power of God is a sound mind. We get our minds right. We reflect that to the others around us. And that is how we help empower others to do the same. It's not religion. It's not ritualistic religious laws or views. It's principles. It's proverbs. It's psalms. It's tears. It's hugs. It's cries. It's laughs. It's joy. It's living in community with others 
as peacefully as you can. And understanding that there is no utopia. There is no perfect promised land. Not here, not on this earth. But doing our best to manifest it through our own reality each and every day. So, as we head west on Caesar's Drive... If you put these principles into action, I promise, people will take notice. In fact, in the beginning, people will probably think you're weird. And that's okay. People might walk out of your life. And if you radically put these in, into practice, and people ask you a question, you can simply say, you know, I'm doing what I need to do to be the change that I want to see in the world. So with that being said, I did promise that there would be a moment to pull out your technology. I'd love you to pull out your cell phones. Go ahead. It's okay. Something new. If you'd like to remain in contact, if this resonated with you, I do publish a free newsletter, have a podcast, I send the podcast updates over the newsletter. If you go to your iMessage or your Messages app and type in 844-721-1940 and just text message the word VICTORY, VICTORY, to 844-721-1940. It'll ask you for your email address. Plug in your email address, you'll be subscribed to my newsletter, and I'd love to stay in touch. I'd love to help you help others. Thank you guys for being here. It really, tr truly means the world to me.